one man's trash, we know the cliche. But to some in energy circles, a nation's trash can become a national energy source. Waste to energy projects are popping up across the country. Local and state governments are using these projects to shrink landfills and carbon footprints. Clean Skies' Lee Patrick Sullivan has more. They're burning trash here at this Northern Virginia waste facility. More than 3,300 tons a day to be exact. But this isn't your father's incinerator. So we're standing out. It looks like we're about, I don't know, 500 yards from the smokestack. I don't see soot coming out. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a bad smell. And, uh, and, but you're, yet you're burning trash right now. Yeah, so uh, we really don't like the, the term smokestack. That's a term from the past from the old incinerators. Okay. Uh, with this really state-of-the-art air pollution control equipment, there is no smoke or soot that comes out the stack. And they're not too fond of the word incinerator either, mostly because it isn't one. It's a power plant. It's fuel, the trash of Fairfax County, Virginia. The air pollution equipment on this plant is so state-of-the-art, it made up more than half of the cost of the entire facility. The result? Enough baseload electricity for 85,000 homes and nothing but steam coming out of those stacks. We're using post-recycled waste to give us a very clean plant, a plant that can make electricity with less emissions than your conventional power plants of today. Burning trash for electricity isn't new. There are more than 400 of these plants in Europe creating electricity while keeping trash out of landfills. We produce close to population centers because of course the fuel comes from those population centers and we don't need to build a big infrastructure to distribute the power that's already in place. The ash that is created from this plant is shipped off to landfill so it can be used as cover. I'm standing on top of the largest landfill in the state of Maryland. 2,500 tons of trash come into this place every single day and within hours it's covered with dirt and it starts producing an energy source, methane. Wayne Brashers was here in 1984 when this facility was constructed. Back then it opened with little fanfare. Oil was cheap, so was electricity from coal. But with more Americans concerned with the effects of methane gas, a much stronger greenhouse gas than carbon, it's starting to get attention again. Brashers says there's no reason this can't work in any landfill. If you properly treat the gas to, so it's usable in the engines, uh, you can pretty much do this anywhere. Here's how it works. Hundreds of wells are dug into the landfill. The gas is then funneled into this building, where it is pressurized and cleaned. Then it travels to another building where four engines are waiting. Think of them as car engines on steroids. Just one of these takes 100 quarts of specialized oil. They then move a turbine, creating electricity. Uh, historically, the economics haven't been right to build uh, the amount of investments that required and uh, the size of the plant hasn't been economical to, to make it a, a, a fair return. But we are seeing electricity prices going up. There's uh, the introduction of carbon credits today and uh, renewable energy certificates, which all go to help as well as tax uh, incentives that uh, are available from, on both the state and national level to, uh, to help finance these types of projects and make them, uh, make them real. These engines create enough electricity to power the landfill facility plus 4,000 homes, as well as provide electricity to this nearby prison, as well as fuel for its boilers for heat. Now it's not always about turning garbage into energy. Sometimes it's about retrieving the energy that's already in it, like this machine here in Deerwood, Maryland, that changes plastic bottles back into oil. The company behind the machine is Envion. Currently, it's only a demonstration model, but the company says a commercial scale version can produce oil at about 10 cents a gallon. In Washington, Lee Patrick Sullivan, Clean Skies News.